I don't, did you, I don't know, like, there, she's out there. Yeah. You're the Florida version of Sex in the City, JD. That's when I was smoking my cigar. <laughs> don't be an asshole today. Oh, Jay, I so, got the best uh, drink right now. I got the best drink. Yeah? What I are we drinking today? A little bit of the Shanky's Whip Vanilla Irish Whiskey. Ooh. I love the color. It's like so dark. And it smells like vanilla ice cream. And then I got Coke. <laughs> nice. I have to see if we have that here. Shanky's yeah, Vanilla Shanky's, Irish Whiskey. Shanky's Whip. Oh, Shanky's Whip. Shanky's Whip is a black liqueur whipped together with Irish spirits, Irish whiskey, and a cream flavoring. Wow. Like a whole dessert with the, you know, the fun part yeah, of the alcohol. Exactly. And <laughs> with the Coke, it just tastes like a, like you bought Coke, vanilla Coke. Awesome. Oh. Well, I am thinking Judy brought me over some Buffalo Trace. Which, oh, the good um, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yes, this is Judy likes the, the high end bourbons. And this is, uh, I found out that Buffalo Wings, you know, the chain Buffalo Wings Buffalo we have Wild here. Wings? Buffalo Wild Wings, yes. Yeah, yeah. They, this is their brand. They, they make Buffalo Trace. I did didn't not know that. that. That's a big deal over here. <laughs> is Buffalo it? Trace. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Very sought and after. Glass on well, the rock. Let's, uh, let's brand. raise the glass to our newest team member. Yes. Nick Austin's going to be joining us right now. Yeah. He's going to I'm bring us some, some, news. some gay headlines. And I think that's all that's missing from this show. You know? Yes. Just like some gay headlines. <laughs> Did we make the headlines? We didn't make them yet. Right? <laughs> I'm waiting for the day we're in the headlines on the show. Yeah, that would be me fun. too. Me too. All right. Let's let Nick in. This is uh this is a fun edition. Oh yeah. Hi. Hey, hey, how's it going? Hey. Yeah, yeah. How are you both doing? Uh, you know, uh, let's just say thank God it's Friday. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Jay, yeah, you can that. attest, right? Oh, definitely. I was <laughs> pretty much alone in the office all week, so I'm that ready sucks. for yeah. tonight. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. And I'm pretty much alone in my house all week. And all I did were projects. Like I'm so sick of it, like projects. I don't know, maybe you guys can relate to this. Maybe not, I don't know. But if you've ever had to put a comforter into a duvet cover. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> wrestling the devil, okay? Yes. That was my day yesterday washing the duvet cover, trying to get the comforter back in. My arms are killing me today. <laughs> killing me. <laughs> so sure. much cramming and shaking and trying to get the lumps out, trying to get the corners all the way up. I was in it at one point. I was inside <laughs> the fucking thing at one point. Um, so that sucked. And then uh, I finished that and I, and I just did like so much cleaning. And then <laughs> my last trip, down the stairs because there's nothing more uh, that I hate it going back up and down the stairs 10 million times a day. But um, so my last trip down the stairs and I noticed that I had tracked dirt up the stairs as clean as I got it upstairs. You know, like I look and I'm like, what is that? And I somehow tracked dirt up the stairs and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it's staying. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> at that point <laughs> yeah i was so over it like i had to take like two leaves and just go to bed and uh, i woke up this morning and it was like i i was just so sore so so sore from all the cleaning and projects and and the last thing i have to do is caulk my shower pan and i'm just not looking forward to it oh no so uh that's pretty much it so my week is is done i saved all my apple tv shows for oh, okay um, yeah like all my the morning show and um you know uh 
Have you guys heard of Truth Be Told? Yes. Yeah, I um, just finished the second season. So good, right? Yeah, it is. Oh, I'm man. Jay, huge Octavia a, Spencer. Is, yeah, Octavia Spencer. It's mm. about uh, a podcaster that does true crime podcasts. Oh. And so each oh. season is a different murder that she's like delving into it's just it's oh. really good really really good good cast was that a real person is that a documentary or that's no, no, no. it's her it's oh. her it's octavia spencer playing Poppy playing the person. i forget her name but yeah um, mm-hmm. and wasn't kate hudson in the second season fantastic yeah she's been great she's yeah i'm really happy that she's returned to acting and she's choosing some really good projects so that's yeah it was such a different um like a different character that I ever pictured her playing, you know, you just can't figure out like if she's good or bad, you know, it was like, (laughs) yeah, it was good. It's good stuff. So um, yeah, that was, that was, I'm saving up. uh, I have a couple of those and, uh, and the morning show is it's stressing me out, but in a good way, you know, like I've never, uh, Jennifer Aniston um, is so stressed out in this that when I'm done with it, I feel like I need a Xanax and a shot, you know, (laughs) crazy, but um, yeah, so I'm just, I'm going to chill out this weekend. That's my goal. The weather, the temperatures are dropping. It's perfect. Is it, is it snowing in Colorado, Nick? Uh, Not currently. We um, almost had some snow, but not cold enough yet. I saw this big cold front moving. Jay, sorry. I know you know nothing. (laughs) You know nothing of cold weather. Dallas, Dallas. (laughs) but yeah yeah I thought my, my family lives in Buffalo they're gonna get nailed this weekend so I uh I was keeping an eye on that and um yeah I was wondering if it came from Colorado <laughs> do they have you yeah. not, <laughs> see I have a sweater yet. on I'm pretending it's cold but it's my, I, I need to make it a, have the make air drop down to what 68 I to. <laughs> yes I have to drop the air down to wear my sweater <laughs> that's funny so Nick, uh, I was, we were just telling everybody that you are our newest member and you're going to bring us gay headlines yes. um, every uh, uh, second, second weekend of the month. If we do this, you know, and then air it on Sunday. So it'll be like the second weekends of the month. And uh, I think it's like just what we need because we're always just kind of like effing around. And I mean, we got good guests, don't get me wrong. <laughs> and we got a great house mixologist. But I think uh, the world needs to know about the gay headlines. So what have you, you and, I, and, I, and I gave you free will to pick whatever you, want, you wanted to uh, <laughs> share with us. So this is your debut. We're going we're, we're gonna to build yes. an algorithm and be like, uh, when I see a news headline, I'll be like, oh, Nick's going to pick that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And we were not um, short of headlines this week, that's for sure. I know. Should we should we just dive in? Go ahead. Dive and, in, man. Head yeah. Head, yeah. Like we're just Deep like dive. Man. Yeah. So first up is some casting news. I'm not sure if either of you have heard, but um, Sex and the City alum Kim Cattrall is joining yes. the Fierce Folk reboot. And what? First of all, I just read did that. Did anybody today. else know there was a reboot? I did not see a reboot coming. Nope. Me no. either. I know. I was really excited to hear that. You it's know, like it, is it just been under wraps? It's like, but what, <laughs> like, well, I, is it? It's is it on a pay, like a pay streaming service then? So um, it's. Go ahead, Nick. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You. Oh no! So I found out it's on <laughs> Peacock, <laughs> and um, it's going to be set in New Orleans instead Ooh. of where it originally was. And wasn't it um, Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Pittsburgh. We're going so south. New Orleans. That's okay. Wow. That's going to be a diverse cast then, I would imagine. Yeah. So far, that's what they've been talking about, um, is that they have a lot of different identities being represented in this reboot. And Kim Cattrall's character is um, a martini-soaked, high-society, <laughs> southern debutante with trailer park roots. Trailer wow. roots. Okay, I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm like, this sounds like Samantha, except just right out of, you know, the Midwest or something like that. Right. Samantha Bayou. Excellent. Samantha Bayou. I love that. 
Oh, that is kind of big. I just, so, I, speaking of that, Jay, you'll like this. I, the new trailer for And Just Like That is out. Mm, that's oh, true. Oh, okay. There's another one. Okay. It's, it, you know, like it, it, it makes you feel like you did when you watch the Friends reunion. You know, you get all like choked right. up and everybody's together. And then that flash of Willie Garson. And yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. I, I got so emotional. I just, I got so emotional. I'm like, I'm never going to make it through. Uh, it just, it, that one hit me. That hit me hard, man. I don't, and I don't I really know. know why, but that hit me really hard. I know. Nick is uh, is queer as folk. Is it going to be this the original cast with new people added or all new people? It's an all new cast. Oh, that I didn't know because I read a little bit about it just today, but I didn't really have a chance to read the whole article. So yeah, that's, I was going to have a weird feel to it. Like yeah. I feel like yeah, you're really. you're not just going to be able to jump right in. It's like you're going to have to get to know each new person and then right. in your head you'll be doing the math like well who are they supposed to oh right. oh they're the brian character oh that's the justin character you know what i mean like you're going to be doing the math to see right. the per how they how they work that's it true. out is anybody original like producer director anything do you know i think the original uh creator of the series is executive producing it so they definitely have the original you know kind of hands involved but none of the original cast so far and i'm like if they're casting like kim cattrall then they're definitely not worried about casting any of the original characters it's because, like, yeah, you know. exactly. wow so i wonder why do they call it a reboot wouldn't it just be like a new show like i thought the reboot would be like the same people again like they're doing with and just yeah. like that i think right that, um, i don't know Little yeah because Garfin. they're yeah they're calling like the sex in the city like they're calling it a reboot right even yeah. though it's the like well it's the trio it's, yes yeah, so, since we're missing Kim control and that you know <laughs> and now we know and I, I think like i think that like the actor that played steve um Oh, what's her? What's his name in real life? Uh, he's on That's on Chicago name. Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and Miss and Big Big's coming back on. Uh, yeah, on I don't the think they missed a but, beat. I mean, they pretty much Mario yeah. Cantone. Mario Cantone is back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, well, that's yeah. exciting, though, Nick. That that's, well, that's a good bit of that's a good bit and of news about Samantha going to be in Queer as Folk. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it makes it makes perfect sense. You know. Right, so, one up for you, Nick. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> news we like. I know, yeah. some fun news. <laughs> and some other fun news. I'm sure both of you heard about Kristen Stewart getting engaged. Mm -hmm. I yeah. I, I know we have some queer wedding news her. here. I love her. And I'm not ashamed to say it because oh, so many either. people don't like her. But okay, let me put it this way. I didn't start liking her until like way after the Twilight stuff, you yeah. know, like I wasn't, you know what I mean? Like I got into her when she started doing like little quirky independent films like Clouds of Maria Silas and um, uh, was it Cafe or something like that? Um, not so much the Woody Allen one, but I just, I think part of me is like, I'm admiring her choice in, in um, quirky, weird films. Yeah. Yeah. You no, know, and then all that came to a head with the happiest season. And I was just like, you go, girl. <laughs> I know. It was so nice to see her in that too. You know, we get some nice queer women, Christmas representation, happy holidays with that. We were all mm -hmm. looking forward to it. Yeah. And it was the it was the Dan the Dan Levy era. So yes. that just helped the momentum of that movie. And uh I just uh I I was so like, I, you know, and like, I, for my wife, like could care less. Like, she's just like, ugh, whatever. She's always so, <laughs> she's always so moody. And I'm like, yeah, but she wasn't moody on SNL. I think she just gets portrayed that way. She goes, no, nah, I think she's moody. I'm like, no, no. But then after happiest season, she was like, all right, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was the range. That was the range we were looking for. That was it, that was it. <laughs> just, now we just now need now a happiest all season. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I saw, uh, what did I see? A little clip where she said something about wanting Guy Fieri to um, 
to, to cater the wedding or whatever. Yes. And then he made a video saying that he would do it. Is that, am I right about wow. that? Wow. Yes, that was part of the news headline is that on the oh, Today okay. Show, he surprised her and said that he would officiate her wedding. Oh, officiate the wedding. That was it. Okay. See, I would want him to cater it. I wouldn't really care who was officiating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the right. Flavor Town <laughs> wedding. That would be the thing, right? The catering part, right? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's funny. And I think she even cracked the smile. She was like a little yeah. excited about it. Did a little. Yes. <laughs> and I, I think the woman she's marrying, I, I, don't, I don't remember her name, but she was on Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, do, isn't, do I have the right couple? Because uh, who is she marrying, Kristen Stewart? I'm trying We're, to. I think she was. She's a. Um, she's in the business. I just think she's more behind the scenes. I didn't know uh, she was stealing something, I, right? I think it she was, was on Fear the Walking Dead. I have to. I have to look and see. I could be mistaken, but I'll have to um, let you research so, that, Nick. <laughs> yeah. So she's. Um, she's engaged to Dylan Meyer, who's a screenwriter. I, I thought it was a behind the scenes thing. Oh, oh yeah. wrong couple. Okay. I have to see who the I'd love to know who you were thinking of. Yeah. Who are you? Uh, yeah. Of? I gotta when I find it, when I figure it out. I mean, I was scrolling and I saw two women got engaged, two, you know, entertainment people in the entertainment business. But I thought it was Kristen Stewart. I guess no, you know what? Yes, I'm mistaken. I'll be, I'll come back. I'll be back next week with the, um, <laughs> to correct my mistake. Of what okay, I that is so on brand any, for you like, being like one women. step behind. <laughs> I blurted that out with such confidence too. Like, yeah, you did. Like, I really knew. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. I knew nothing, no names. I knew nothing. <laughs> I'm happy for her and yet I'm sad because like, I know she has a rough time in relationships and I always wondered, is it because she, she, she was like, like started out kind of straight that went a little by and now is like pretty much full out queer. So maybe this relationship will be okay, but <laughs> I hope so. so. I hope, yeah. I just hope for the best, you know? You got it. Like we all love Kristen Stewart it. now, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to Spencer. I've watched the trailer like a couple of times now. So I saw it last Wednesday and, you, you know, just a nice little tease. It is wonderful. She fully embodies Princess Diana. And the whole film is just a particular three days. It is. And oh. um, if you know, if you've seen Jackie by Pablo Lorraine and it had, um, it had, uh, gosh, her name is blanking on me. Black Swan, <laughs> Natalie <laughs> Portman. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm like, um, so if you've seen Jackie with Natalie Portman, then you know that a lot of his films have um, some psychological elements to it. So there are some scenes where um, you're not really sure if it's really happening or if it's just in her head. There's this one very um, gruesome scene. So be prepared for a little bit of horror elements, especially with like, the score, the backing sound with it. Yeah, really? so yeah, it's oh, not God, like more fun intrigued. Princess Diana. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I really can't wait. I'm, I, I, it's, you know, over here, you would think that people would just be like literally obsessed, you know, uh, with the crowd yeah. in movies mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. They don't really, they're, it's very, it's 50, it's very black and white, you know, either they either mm -hmm. love them, the royal family, or they absolutely despise them and they want nothing to do with them. Interesting. You know, and I feel like the news tries to walk this fine line where they're not negative about them, but they're not oh, entirely positive, you know? Yeah. So it's a really, yeah. really weird thing. But when the crown comes out, it's like, clear your schedule that weekend we're binging it from front <laughs> to back you know what I mean? like gonna watch the whole thing and i feel like i've learned more about them by watching the crown than i ever would yeah. by reading anything over here you know well yeah i'm sure it's incredibly biased the news yeah. depending yeah. on like what what source if it if it leans more conservative or more um, I'm trying to think of um, more of like a liberal term over in the UK, but 
you know, I'm sure that the news is very much biased towards the royal family. Yeah, it's, it's you know, every time they are in the headlines, it's absolutely polarizing. You yeah. know, like if it's a Meghan Markle thing, it was Harry yes. like leaving the, you know, the royal name and all that. It was very, you know, split down the middle. Like people either respected it or they thought he was a douchebag or they thought it was her fault or they just absolutely love her. There's just no middle ground where everybody's just like, whatever. Mm -mm. They have an <laughs> opinion and it's either good or it's either bad, you know? Yeah, like um, after the um, Meghan Markle and Harry interview with Oprah, you know, um, I read that there was a lot more sentiment with the American people towards Meghan Markle after that interview, but over in the UK and England, it was the complete opposite. Yeah, yeah, they did not like it. Mm -hmm. And they certainly didn't like it being primetime on one of the big three channels over here. You know, you have BBC, you have Channel 4, and you have ITV. And I think it ran on Channel 4, or was it ITV? It might have been ITV. But they, you know, they were like, trash like that should be on in the morning, or trash like that should be on in the afternoon. And they they, they were mad about it. Wow. They don't care about what she has to say to Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. But oh, yeah, it's, um, I'm so yeah. jealous. I'm so jealous that you, um, that you got to see the teaser thing. That's incredible. You saw the whole <laughs> movie, Spencer, or just the teaser? The whole movie and it's great so and you saw what did you tell me yesterday belfast yeah i got to see belfast freaking so jolly yeah how was that and it was great jamie dornan was actually there he um did a little q a over oh. here in denver he you know he's been doing the whole like you know press circuit just mm -hmm. going like a whirlwind and he's been really doing well with that and so he came and he accepted an award and he was just you know the sweetest you know most charismatic so yeah. Irish guy you know yeah, <laughs> I, I, he was on Graham Norton um and I love every time he's on there because they there's usually like an embarrassing story oh yeah and uh you know Graham will be like didn't something happen when you were in like seventh grade or whatever? And he'll be like, oh yeah, yeah. And he just tells the whole story front to back. You know, he's not one to just say, yeah, I don't really remember. Or just like, let it pet. Nope. He tells the whole story and he's like, not afraid of like looking like a jerk. I love it. Yeah. I love that too. You know, it's nice to see, you know, someone of his stature, someone who, you know, is very much still considered like a sex symbol for different populations, um, you know, to be so, you know, naked self -deprecating. with his, very yeah, self-deprecating, like that's who he is. Mm -hmm. There's a yeah, few people yeah. over here that have really surprised me, um, because you know, when you think of a, of a British person, you know, when you think of a Brit, the first thing that comes to mind is little posh, a little uptight, you know. <laughs> yeah. And like I always thought that about like so many of the celebrities, but. And I don't know if it's just because like I faithfully watched the Graham Norton show because he seems to just put people at ease or maybe it's because there's a lot of them out there on the couch at the same time and they feel mm -hmm. a little more comfortable. It's not all about mm -hmm. that. But mm -hmm. um, Kate Beckinsale really surprised me about how crazy funny she is. Like I just always thought of her with the locked jaw and being very proper and everything. And She's not. She's super <laughs> funny. Like I'll see him on Graham Norton and then I'll be like, oh, I got to follow them on Instagram. And her Instagram is absolutely hysterical too. So like <laughs> I, I'm learning so much more about these people over here. I think they've got two sides to them, you know, when, they, when they're out uh, in public or whatever, they're a little bit more uptight. And when they're, um, you know, their Instagram, it's just, she's she cracks me up it's true it's yeah. they're true. not they're not the stuffy brits that we we think yeah. they might they have be. like a really decent sense of humor and you know <laughs> they don't even mind if it's about them you know it's great yeah that's, that's huge <laughs> well i the next news is a little bit um ridiculous if you want to think about it so it's in world news <laughs> 
So Russia has come out and has deemed local LGBTQ activists as quote unquote foreign agents and mm. China has also shuttered the country's biggest LGBTQ advocacy group. That I did, I did read. Wow. About. Yeah, I did read about that. The Russian one is a little bit funny though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, foreign agents. <laughs> Okay, you guys, I got to fuss up. I moved <laughs> over here because I work for MI5. <laughs> I know. I can't even imagine. I'm like, yes, because in one of the, yeah, one of the world's worst countries for LGBTQ rights and treatment. And it's like, yeah, activists are, you know, just kind of seeping their way in to disrupt Russia and all of its glory. I like, think really? it so they can so they can arrest them on a bogus charge oh yeah because yeah, you know they just throw yeah. People, yeah they just throw everybody in jail and have a sham trial with that's no true. evidence you know so yeah right. that's, that's a setup for um political prisoners i believe <laughs> no yeah it's true because you know that's what they've done with any type of you know, um, opposition activists in Russia against Putin and mm -hmm. one in political power. So to call them foreign agents does allow them to be able to do that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But just the term, it's just it's baffling. You know, in this darkly comedic way. Yeah, like not to make light yeah. of it, but I I did start watching a show on Netflix called Q Force. Yes. Yeah, I've seen it. It's great. <laughs> Jay, have you heard about that? What is that? No, I'm looking for a new oh, Netflix. Shit. It's it's a cartoon mm -hmm. and Sean Hayes um, from Will and Grace. Oh, Jack, yeah. Right? Sean yeah, Hayes. Yeah, I love him. That's Jack, right? Yeah, he yes. does the voice yeah. of the main wow. character. Wanda Sykes does the voice of another main character. A mm -hmm. lot of great people in it. Dan yeah, Lee. yeah. Fortune Feimster, um, and it's oh, about uh, uh, these um, spies that uh, got banished because they were gay. Yeah. So they sent them to West Hollywood. <laughs> of all places. <laughs> of all places. <laughs> they send them to West Hollywood and uh, they all have like, uh, you know, um, like, fake jobs you know like you're your decorator and Wanda Sykes is a mechanic at Pet Boys and but yet they're these spies and they haven't had a job in 10 years because the agency has just kind of forgot about them yeah so they're trying to like prove themselves and it is just so funny and they're so fat I watched the whole series this afternoon like they're only like 25 minutes not even 25 minutes long mm -hmm. and there's only 10 episodes but funny as as I'll get out the voice of the um the director didn't hit me it's Lori Metcalf from Rosemary yeah. oh, oh, really? yeah. oh. I kept trying to figure it out like I know that voice I know that voice <laughs> I absolutely love Do that cartoons I... look like the people a little the bit voice? you can definitely yeah, tell yeah, <laughs> the fortune feimster one was pretty special Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Down yeah. to the curly He's blonde a hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The one of the psychs, it was the uh, everybody's eyes kind of look like they would. <laughs> but um yeah, I just it's it's really, really funny. They have like the hacker, the mechanic, you know, the brainiac mm -hmm. mechanic, the hacker, and the drag queen. Oh is hysterical. <laughs> Because and it's perfect. master of disguise yeah it's great it's where and then there's a straight guy that's stuck with them <laughs> you know it's like a he's the most crude ridiculous version of straight like down to the hair <laughs> on his true. arms right <laughs> the hair on his arms and the curly <laughs> oh man so good it's actually so good that. I'm gonna See, look for that. We need Q Sounds Force right. to infiltrate Russia. Russia, exactly. <laughs> that'll be the next one, right? When this headline yes. starts, <laughs> right. you know, picking up steam or something, that'll give them the idea for the next series. Yes, <laughs> that's hysterical. I mean, it's not, but it is a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, that's that's sad, 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 sad. Because you can see how how it's going to go. You can see the direction it's going to go. In the China, like that was. I part of me thought I can't believe it's just happening now like I can't believe they didn't shut that down 
like years ago because they're so, yeah. you know, yeah, like, but it, it's just, um, it makes you appreciate where you are. That's true. You know, no matter how bad you think it is, that's all you have to do is think about what it's like in another country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally. That's yeah. absolutely true. Yeah. Especially because our next news item is based here in the United States. Mm-hmm. And cool. if you're looking for some schadenfreude, and Visalia, California, school board member Christopher Pope, who had berated a gay teacher about his sexual, quote unquote, sexual relations, had to resign in shame after. Now that is some great news. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy though, right? Wait, the gay resigning shame. So the man. So the man who, he's a part of the school board, and he berated this teacher who's openly gay for his sexual relations, you know, using the term sexual relations, and he had to resign because of the comments he made about this teacher. Okay, good. All right, that's a good thing then. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) We love, we love some Shannon right there. We love I love, I love a, I love a revenge story. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Where where were that? where did that was in Visalia, California. California. It's oh, so wow. liberal out there, too. God. I know. That's what I was thinking. Wow. Yeah. California is strange because the further you move inland from the coast, the more conservative it is. I actually have a friend who lives out in California, and she lives in Inland Empire, which is pretty close to L.A. Um, well, of course, considering LA traffic, it's pretty far away, but, (laughs) you know, (laughs) but close enough to LA, and she says that it's one of the most conservative, like, cities in California, and there's just this huge divide. Oh, I never, I never knew that. I knew there were pockets, because I saw a couple of CNN reports, and I just didn't catch, you know, like, where they were where they were interviewing these people and their MAGA hats and stuff. And I was like, oh I knew it was California, but I was just like, all right, well, yeah. California is pretty big. Like maybe they're just mountain people, you know, <laughs> like, but yeah, yeah, there, there is, there's uh, there are a few big pockets of, uh, you know, like redneck counties as I call them. Well, yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. yeah. And you would think that it would be like, kind of like the opposite of Texas where there's like, you know, like maybe one or two like blue pockets in the more densely populated urban areas, but Mm -hmm. in California, it's, it's pretty split, you know, that recall of the governor there, Gavin Newsom, that was pretty close. Yeah, it was pretty panicked. I was panicked. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, I knew that Terry McAuliffe was going to lose in Virginia because just the way Biden's numbers were plummeting, you know, out there, I just said, if they don't pass the infrastructure bill and the Build Back Better bill, he's got nothing. He's got no platform to That's promote, true. you know, in his campaign. So when that didn't happen, I was like, yeah, he's not going to, he's not going to win this. He's not going to win this. <laughs> so yeah, it kind of, um, I, it, it makes me nervous because I feel like just like there was a liberal blue wave democratic uprising, you know, to get Biden in, into office. I feel like it's going to swing the other way. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be an uprising of the QAnon, you know, conspiracy theorists, you know, Trump loving mouth breathers. And then we're all in trouble. Yeah, we're going to have to wait till the midterms to see people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and um, Lauren Boebert, who unfortunately resides in Colorado, um, to see if that they will... still packing weirdos, right? Yes, <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh. Yes, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, we have to wait till the midterms to see if they'll be unseated because if they're not, then I have a very sinking feeling about what's going to be. I do feel like if, uh, if Congress gets together and censures Paul Gosar for that crappy video that he made his fantasy cartoon video of himself killing AOC and oh, pulling out yeah. the cords on Biden he's a, he, he's a goddamn senator and he's putting this stuff out on Twitter so I like know. you know they're calling to censure him so if they do that you know if they can actually agree to do that then I think people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and and Lauren Boebert I think 
they'll finally have something to fear because they've gotten no, there's no consequences to their actions ever. No, yeah. yeah, for the things they say and the shit that they do up and down the halls of Congress, you know, mm -hmm. like they should have been kicked out a long, long time ago. I mean, at least they they booted um, MTG from her uh, committees, which you know, that's it's still not enough. It's still not enough. No, it's not. Yeah, it's terrible. It's happening over there. It's it's ridiculous. And did you want to hear the final? Big I do. news item. Yeah, I we've yeah. got uh, we've got five minutes left. So yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> let's get it. So I'm not sure if either of you are big on TikTok. You know, if you're big TikTok fans, mm. a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I have to be really, really bored to start. <laughs> but I do have a TikTok account. I will say it. Yeah, me too. I know. Uh, unfortunately, I, think I, need one. I don't have one yet. Is you will get late? sucked in, <laughs> JD. You'll get sucked in if you do. Get sucked in by fat farting babies. That's the that's yes. The, that's um, <laughs> I feel like I'm not cool. I'm you know I I don't have a high level of coolness anyway. So like I think I could raise it a little with TikTok. I'm not sure. <laughs> I just feel, I feel you. real old when I'm on it, but yeah. What Even I feel old and uh, you know, <laughs> baby. <laughs> <20s here. laughs> so what happened but, on TikTok? Yeah, so TikTok. So um, they're known as the old gays. It's a group of older gay men, and they have signed <laughs> with this media group. It's called <laughs> Brian Garden Media to develop a docu-series about their personal and professional social media lives all while wow. living together in Cathedral City, California. More California news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like the Golden Boys. Yeah, it's the Golden Boys. <laughs> okay. Yeah, in Miami, California. Right. I Perfect. would watch it. Yeah. I would watch it. I get sucked into that kind of shit. <laughs> I would watch yeah. it. And That's it's like, uh, they're real people, right? It's like a reality, reality show. Yeah, they're, um, they've been lifelong friends and they all have lived in the same kind of community together in California. And they are some of the um, biggest influencers on TikTok, um, both, you know, like the gay side of TikTok and, you know, being older queer men, it's just <laughs> really great to see them. You Does, know, it, what age? Platform. Does it say their ages around? So they're in their 80s. <laughs> Yes. And they're TikTok legends already. Yeah, I followed them. I followed them beforehand. So I, I was so happy to hear that news. That will become a show. I guarantee you that will become. Oh, definitely. I mean, yeah. someone will take that idea, twist it up, you know, yep. bring it to Netflix yep. and boom, you know. Honestly, I'm surprised the Golden Girls hasn't been rebooted already. With yeah, how much it's beloved. I, you know, it's funny. I have a friend up in Buffalo that runs like a, a local, like regional theater, and uh, they're doing a, an original Golden Girls play. And every time oh. I post pictures from it, I die laughing. I I'm like, it. oh my god, this is so bad. This is. So <laughs> but yeah, they're. I mean, they're still. Oh yeah, iconic. they're timeless. They're yeah, they are. so good. It's so good. Yeah, I love. Um, I follow Frank DeCaro and his husband, Jim Colucci, and Jim wrote a book about, you know, the Golden Girls thing. And I just, I wanted to order it, but I felt like I saw so much of it, like online, I was going to have that cool down before I, you know, my interest <laughs> peaks again and I, and I order it. But um, yeah, I mean, you just, you can't go wrong with them. They're just fantastic. We just did a, a 500 piece Golden Girls puzzle last month. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, that's, that is true love right there. <laughs> right? This yeah. is a Sunday afternoon, you know, just drinking <laughs> tea and doing a puzzle. I have the Golden Girls game. It's like a, a little board game and you win cheesecakes. You're the playing <laughs> that you win are cheesecakes. And when you win all four types of the cheesecake, then you win that round. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. I got that friends like Monopoly and you and you um you put couches on the uh oh. on the yes thing, little sofas and yeah you got, I, i'm always joey i'm always the pizza box <laughs> <laughs> that's funny well, now oh, we'll nick. have to create a golden gaze um 
board game. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. That would be fantastic. Love it. Jesus, those were good headlines, man. Those were good. Yeah. Thank I'm you. loving the last one, the best. That's that's gonna be good. I want to <laughs> see eight year old queers. Yes. <laughs> Well yeah, done, well. man. Good well, thank first you. day, Nick. Good thank first you, Nick. day. Yes. yes, thank you for having me. I was happy to share those with both of you. That's that's fantastic. You're picking winners, man. You're picking good gay headlines. Good winners. <laughs> yes, get the gay headlines going. That's it. That's the hashtag gay headlines. <laughs> yes. And I'll have my facts straight next time. I have to get the people right in my story. <laughs> yeah, so know, your, know your <laughs> gay, know your lesbian <laughs> weddings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's fantastic. Right. Well, listen, this has been amazing. I, I am loving this edition and I cannot wait until the December headlines because as the holidays get closer, people get crazier and the gays do the holidays. You know, they do it mm -hmm. up. They'll get so, queer. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> oh, you guys, fantastic. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Nick. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, you guys. Bye. Uh -huh. <laughs> we drank way too much whiskey. Like, never stop chasing your dreams. <laughs>